Welcome to the Holland Financial Report. It's October 20th, and I am David Holland, CEO of Holland Financial, and joining me is Robert Mara, our Vice President of Investments. And we're going to get an update from Robert on inflation. So where are things standing with inflation? And let's talk a little bit about consumer price index and the producer price index. Okay, well, the Federal Reserve, most people associate inflation with the consumer price index, what the consumer is paying for. Uh, right now, about 5.4% um, okay. is what people are paying more than they were last year. Okay, annualized rate year over year. Correct. Excellent. So the consumer price index, that, that gets thrown around a lot, CPI. What does that stand for? What does that represent? Well, CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. And what it is, or how it's measured, is the average price increase of a basket of goods for the urban consumer, believe it or not, they, they bifurcate from the rural areas to the urban, um, for what uh, the usual average urban consumer purchases for a basket of goods. And that is what people usually see and note when they talk about inflation, they're usually talking about the consumer price index. Okay, so they get a measure of what the typical consumer buys during the year, what that costs them, and then compares it to the next year, and that serves as kind of this year-over-year -year inflation index that we get from the consumer price index. Correct, okay. yes. All right, so how is that different from what's called the producer price index? Well, the producer price index um, is very important because it's broader than the CPI. The CPI focuses on what the consumer is purchasing um, for their final goods and services at the re retail outlet, at the stores. Sure. The producer price index um, not only says what's, it's what producers are paying, um, it, it's what prices they are paying for goods, um, but it's not only goods that they're selling to the retail customers, it's also goods that they're selling to governments and to businesses. So it's, so it's a lot broader, yes. And is it uh, help to give us an idea when we look at the producer price index, give us an idea of where things quote unquote are headed, kind of a, a leading indicator? Yes, in fact, the producer price index dovetails nicely into the consumer price index, um, but the producer price index, there are different stages of when goods are produced. The intermediate time of when producers are actually making things. And then we also have the commodity or the materials index. Um, and just to give you a little idea um, about the latest producer price index, um, that went up 8.7% year wow. over year. Okay, that's significant. And, and not only is that significant, but it's worth knowing that that was the sixth consecutive month of not just higher producer price index readings, but record-breaking producer price index readings, six consecutive months. So we have CPI that is what we could call elevated, and you and I have talked about this many times about long-term inflation you know, the Federal Reserve, part of their goal that's been kind of their spoken or stated goal is to keep, you know, inflation kind of around an average of 3%. We had a period of time where it was a lot lower than that. Yes. And then it, more recently, we've seen it jump up. So it's not something we would be ringing the fire alarm that there's big cause for concern. However, if we see sustained inflation and PPI pointing to ongoing inflation, this could be something that is more of an issue long term. Absolutely, because yeah. inflation will only eat away at savers, the people who are relying on fixed income bonds for that income. That income is eaten away tragically by inflation. Well, and that is a perfect segue, because I was going to ask you, in this environment where we're seeing a heightened level of inflation and maybe some portends or indications that we may see, at the very least, some continued inflation, if not maybe a little more than what we have now, what is the investor to do to prepare or adjust to that environment? Commodities, uh, precious metals, agriculture, energy. We hard see assets. Hard assets, real estate. We've spoken about REITs, I believe, last week, real estate investment trusts. Um, and if you're looking at fixed income, inflation-protected securities, right, inflation-protected right. treasuries, also known as TIPS. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things. And Stocks, stocks as well. You know, even though stocks are not hard, if the easy monetary policies are to continue, then stock prices are going to be 
I'm not going to say by themselves lifted up, but supported by right. those easy easy money policies. Right. Equity equity investing. So the now with those comments, I always want to make sure we are clear for our viewers on this. We're not saying dump everything and go piling all into real estate and gold. No, not at all. You just may want to take a second look at those investments and maybe incorporate them a little bit more into your portfolio or at least consider them and talk with your advisor about whether there needs to be any adjustments. Absolutely. And because in this environment, it's not a situation where you just throw everything into a wide market index. Um, selectivity is going to be very important going forward okay. and has been for about the last year. Yeah. All right. Well, it's always good to be choosy. Yes. I like that. <laughs> All right, we'll continue to be choosy here at Holland Financial Report. And of course, we'll come back to you and help you plan stronger on a future installment of our report.